Okay, guys and gals, we have one fun thing for you today. Um, for those of you that are book readers, this one is for all of y'all who have a little bit of a, well, more of a futuristic sci-fi fix type thing. Um, 20 years in the future, though, not too far. Um... Those of you who have read Lorelai, you know she can be pretty explicit. That's why the age restriction on this one. Um, the one we are reviewing today is the much-awaited Crossbreed. Crossbreed. I got this book at exactly midnight, or its release time. Read it in a day, but I will have to say... Lorelai definitely stepped up her game with this one. She threw in some twists and turns, made us rethink the concept of her characters, and definitely blew my mind on this one. If I had to rate this straight out before saying any review, I'd have to say a five out of five angel feathers for this girl, because she made this book well worth reading. Her plot was well done. Her grammar and spelling, the best she's done so far. And the surprise factor, definitely worth every second. You could read this the first two or three chapters and not know who Cassie's mate is. But once you hit that point, you are in for a smacked out surprise on who this character is. You get a few hints, I guess, the first second or th the first second chapter ish. But once you get into this, you really, really know who it is. Because if you're understanding these characters and you've read but since the beginning of the series, you definitely will enjoy this. We've been waiting for a book for Cassie since her mama's book. Everybody figured Cassie would get her book eventually. This is one for the books, that's for sure. She's She gives us a whole new perspective of herself as well as a whole new perspective of breeds in general. She's the first alpha female. She is also the first female feral. Or not feral, primal. Which was definitely a shit kicker for me. Because in all of her books, it's always been the lions or the tigers. Always been a female primal. In this book... She steps it up some. Not only does she give us a canine primal, but she gives us a female as well. This is definitely worth reading. This is definitely worth picking up. I have to say this was one of the best books I've read this year. And we're, go we're October 1st. So... We're almost at the end of the year. Two more months and we're done with the year. So this is definitely the best book I've read all year. Especially with twists and turns to a series that, to be honest, was getting a little stale. The last book, Judd's book, we've seen it in the canines. We've seen it with recessed breeds before. But you stepped it up with this hey, book. Where's Mama? Doing bills for Rowdy and Butch. This late? Yeah, because she wasn't able to leave until late. Oh. Okay. Sorry, my sister just got home. But when it comes to this book, I'd have to say, if you're looking for something that steps it up a few notches and makes you ready to read 
This is a book you won't want to put down. This is a book that'll throw you for a loop quicker than all get out. You have not one but two primals revealed. You have the first female alpha. And, and she's able to call all their alphas to her with no issue. That was a kicker in itself. And for her to also be canine and primal, she's a coyote wolf mix and she is a primal. The only thing that I found awesome in this other than that is the fact her mate is primal. So you have your first primal couple in this series. Makes it well worth reading all the way to the end. If you really want a book worth reading, pick this one up. Now I'm going to throw in some more spoilers for you. If you've seen to this point and you have not read the book yet and you don't want this ruined for you, I suggest you click out my video. But this is where the spoilers get in a mess. Her mate has been known as the council's war dog. For those of you who have read the series, you know who the war dog is. Our favorite coyote dog. But he's not council made. His mama was a coyote breed. His daddy was one of the soldiers stationed in her test facility, her mate. He is a hybrid not a council creation. The council is definitely wanting to go after this pair because of the fact that the two hybrids could possibly make a breed, birth a breed from the two of them that cannot be de detected even with deep DNA testing. This book was definitely a throw for a loop. I'm not revealing all secrets for those of you who are possibly watching this now and have not read the book yet, but I will tell you, you are about to be thrown for the biggest loop you've ever seen because this book was worth it. Every second of this book, I wanted to come back to it. I got it at the pre-release moment on my Kindle app, on my phone. I read for several hours before getting sleep for work the next morning. Then during my breaks or my lunch break, I was reading. And then I come home and I read it until I was finished. This is a book you do not want to put down when you start because it is well done. The book starts out as most of her books have started out with the, what it, prelude or whatever she, hold on. I believe she calls it a prelude. Give me just a moment. I'm pulling up. Let's just say this book is one of those moments Yeah, she is she puts her the world of the breeds and the prologue in here. But the world of the breeds is your typical. They were created. They were not born. 
But this is just one story that you think you know who the bad guy is until almost the very end of the book. They get in so many different twists and turns. It's crazy. And you find out in this book that Cassie has known who the breed is. Not who her mate is, but who the breed is she's been working with and who shot her on in Don's Awakening since Don's Awakening. Dog has known she has been his mate since the island. All the twists and turns in this book definitely have me in anticipating the next. Just waiting for her to put more out there. I can't wait till the next book is. I have no idea what it is. So to those of you who are watching this, do not ask me because I do not know. But I will say it's definitely worth watching. It's de not watching. I wish we could watch these. The, the, the storyline would make great movies. I have to say, especially this one. Though I really loved Elizabeth Wolf. She was definitely a good book. But come on. Every single book has been worth it. In the I'm going to read a, a few chapters. So if you haven't read the book yet, well, not a few chapters, a few paragraphs. If you have not read this book yet, do not listen because this will ruin the prologue for you. But I'm only reading like three or four, four paragraphs. She was only 18 and she knew she would die soon. Here on this beautiful island, Seth Lawrence owned. Surrounded by the protective strength of the breed force unlike any other. Cassie knew she wouldn't leave alive. She had seen her own death. It wouldn't be tonight, though. Not yet, but it was coming. She would have to die so others would live. Stepping past the wide double... Oh, hold on. Double doors that opened into the huge atrium. She looked up at the glass dome roof, allowing the knight to slip into the enclosed garden and had to fight back the bitterness, the anger. Turning, she met the eyes of the breed enforcer standing behind her. Their gaze resulted but compassionate and snapped the door closed as they watched her silently. Asked to enjoy the gardens at night, and this is what I get, she muttered, swinging around to let her gaze go over the massive enclosure of brick and glass surrounding it. The glass beneath, ah, sorry, the grass beneath her feet was surprisingly real. A wide wooden Sorry, tired from work. A wide stone walk led into the shadowed green, the lush, heavy growth and sultry scent of moisture and fragrant blossoms pulled her into the depth of it. The atrium, Seth had called it. It was a damned greenhouse and nothing more. A well-protected, stone and bullet-resistant, glass-cased room with only one entrance. The wide door she stepped inside. This was just perfect. It was in... infuriating, and she felt the wild need for freedom clawing at her senses. Moving further... Into the lush greenery, she could find little pleasure here. Despite her bare feet and the feeling of grass beneath them, she found no satisfaction here. Just as she found no satisfaction in the deep 
wide pond trickling in the center of the trees surrounding it. Now tell me she doesn't get a little more descriptive in this book with her prologue. Most of her prologues tend to be, I don't know, almost standard to most book prelogues. But this one she tries to give more emphasis to Cassie's feelings in her situation. It's, how to put it, it's a way of making you feel like you're in her shoes. You can feel how Cassie's feeling with this description. She's tired of being pinned in, is what it is. She's tired of suffering the constant watching and the constant guarding because the council has put a bounty on her head. This is one of those moments where if I was in Cassie's shoes, I just want to run away. 18 and no freedom. Fully classified as an adult and no freedom. Now that, I'd feel suffocated. For those of you who want to report this video, I will warn you, I already got the author's permission to, re to review her book. And most reviews usually always have some sort of spoiler in them or some sort of emphasis on portions of the book. So you can't report me because there's no copyright. I did not copyright. I have the email from Laura Lai herself to review her. But I have to say, this is a five out of five angel feathers. If I went up further, it would definitely be more angel feathers. Because this is a book I will read and read again. So... Just wanted to get this review out to you guys. I promised you it over the weekend. But busy, busy weekend helping move things in my home and everything. And please excuse the bit of a mess behind me. And say hello to Slash, my, my blue-eyed companion. So I hope everybody has a good week. Whether you're working or got a something planned have a good week and what probably one of the kids i don't know i haven't been home most of the day oh my i have not been home all day i didn't get home till 5 30 I'm on live for a live video, so stop. You shouldn't have left it by the chair. But for those of you who have watched, review, uh, click the subscription button below and the bell icon for notifications. These videos will be sporadic till I can get a steady schedule at the moment. I'm working training for my new job. So it will be a bit sporadic until I finish training. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I hope everybody's having a good evening. I hope to see you in the next video. Au revoir.